Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I am very excited because there is a big old pile of hardware here in front of me, which means it is, of course, time for yet another build. Actually, my first build of uh, 2017, so I'm pretty excited here. This is a KB Lake build. It's full-size ATX, and it's also RGB. I'm calling this a classy RGB build because you have the ability to turn all the RGB lights off if you want to, which means you can go for single color and change that. Or if you want to go crazy with the RGBs, you can do that as well. I'm liking the newer uh, family of RGB products again because they're usually like a neutral color scheme like the, the Asus motherboard and graphics card that we have there. Uh, and then the software has come a long way, so we're going to be using Asus Aura software. Um, that will be in the follow-up video where I do testing on this, which should be out in hopefully a week or so. I am waiting on one final product for that part, but more on that in a second. Let's go over all of these parts individually, starting with CPU, which if you didn't already uh, notice, is going to be an Intel. Uh, we still don't have AMD processors from Zen yet, no Ryzen CPUs, so stick with, a, uh, with Intel for now. This is a 7700K highest end uh, chip in the mainstream series from the KB Lake, newly launched set of KB Lake processors. Uh, the case is going to be the Enthu Evolve from Fantex, which is right here. This is the tempered glass side panel version, uh, and it's in the, the satin black finish. Uh, Fantex also sent over a couple of just uh, basic little RGB LED strips here so I can add them to the, the connection. And uh, I, what the, the, the goal here, the idea, is that uh, the motherboard over here has RGB headers on it. So I should be able to wire those up to the case, and I should be able to wire those up to the internal LEDs so it's all controllable via the same software. Uh, now for storage, I have some parts here from OCZ. Uh, I have uh, a really fast M.2 drive, the RD400 there. This is also very expensive, so bear that in mind. It's the one terabyte uh, version of the M.2 NVMe drive. Um, again, super fast, but pretty expensive, so maybe not as practical. Um, only consider this if you really need the speed, if you're doing like lots of video editing or something like that, or if you just need something really fast, if you like having fast stuff. Uh, I have a much more reasonably priced 480 gig Toshiba drive here, the TR150. This one you can get for around uh, $120 or so, I believe, and uh, that's, again, much more reasonable. So um, maybe just get two of these or something if you don't want to get this one. Uh, for a cooler for the CPU, since I actually don't have a, a CPU cooler, um, this is the unlocked k 7700K, so you do need an aftermarket cooler. It's on its side, but I have the NZXT Kraken X62. This one has RGB LEDs in it as well, but this is the only product that isn't going to tie in, as far as I know, with the Aura Suite, so I'm going to maybe need, need to use the uh, NZXT CAM software to control that one, but um, to my knowledge, there's no RGB LED CPU coolers that uh, work with Aura software yet. Probably soon, but um, not not right now. Here's the memory. This is a G-Skill Trident Z set, and again, this is temporary because uh, I'm getting the G-Skill, I believe it's still Trident Z uh, RGB version that has RGB LEDs going across the top, so uh, this will be a placeholder for now, but it will get the job done and allow me to at least get the system up and running. And then, of course, our motherboard and graphics card, both from Asus, the Maximus 9 Hero, I think a very full-featured and yet more reasonably priced uh, member of the ROG series of motherboards from Asus, and also so the Strix uh, GTX 1080, this is the overclock version, and again, both of those are going to have RGB LEDs and work with the, the Aura software and, and all that good stuff. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot the power supply up here on the top. EVGA Supernova 750G2. This was one that I kind of already had on hand, and it's got all black cabling, 750 watts, 80 plus gold. It, again, is going to get the do job done just fine, and I may or may not be getting some sleeving for it, some sleeved cables, or maybe some extensions. Again, if I do that, I'll do it for the, uh, the second follow-up video for this, where I do testing. Anyway, uh, I am just super excited to put this all together, so I'm going to set up some cameras and get some good footage for you guys, and, and I hope it turns out good. Wish me luck. Here goes.
So I've just reinforced a very important lesson. Uh, if you guys have been watching, hopefully you saw me, like I got everything completed. Tempered glass side panels on, even went and peeled, peeled the plastic off there, and that's very satisfying end of the build process. However, um, I've, I've said in the past before, you shouldn't put the side panel on before you power the system on, um, because of course there is a, an ancient curse uh, that applies to all PCs that are built, that if you do that, you will bring uh, pain and misfortune upon yourself and your family. I managed to do that in a way that I have never managed to do before, and that is uh, when the system went power on, I discovered this. Yes, friends, at some point in this build process, early on, uh, when I installed the motherboard, I basically took the pre-wired uh, cable from this case fan and wedged it between the clear CMOS uh, button and the IO shield, meaning the clear CMOS button is, is pressed down, meaning the system will not power on at all, meaning I need to pretty much remove the motherboard or at least get it to mo to shift to get that out of there which is like practically a rebuild it's not like a rebuild i don't know well, let's see how quickly i can fix this uh but anyway that's gonna require me to uh at least re to remove the motherboard or at least shift it in order to get that out of there which means i'm gonna need to undo a lot of the stuff i've done with this build and it's gonna suck but anyway i, I better fix this asap and i'll be back once it is fixed and the system powers on all right, so here it is, this little cable right here, and I've managed to fix it or get it uh, cleared out of the space it was wedged into, thank God. I didn't have to remove the motherboard, uh, but I did have to pull the graphics card out. I removed all nine screws and I lifted the board up just so I could shift it away from the IO sheet a little bit. Then I was able to get the screwdriver down in there, kind of pull it off to the side. And then by accessing from the rear panel, I, I pulled it out all the way. Okay, problem solved, moving on. So here it is everybody, the build in its present state, and you can probably hear it, it's pretty loud. Right now the fans are running at full speed, so uh, it's noisy. But before I turn it off so you can hear me better, I do want to point out that the uh, kit that Fantex sent over, which is right here, which is for connecting up their uh, RGB strips, as well as the uh, RGB elements on this case, which are the uh, accent up at the top right there, as well as this little bar across the front, does seem to have worked. It's got a kind of little loop back thing that you do. It's weird how it connects. It doesn't seem like it would work at first, but they're lighting up and it even lets you pass through and still uh, power these uh, these LED strips that are magnetic that I've kind of stuck in there temporarily for now. So um, good that all that worked and, and yeah, it's functional, but it's not displaying the same colors right now that the motherboard's showing. I think I need to get into the software and um, update that and, and that way I can actually control everything individually. Um, but I do not have time for today's video to load Windows and get the software up and running. So I'm going to need to cut this video a little bit short. Uh, I don't want to say short, but I would normally give you some sexier b-roll shots of this and everything at the end, but I just don't think it's quite in that state, especially without the RGBs uh, up and running properly as they should be. So let me power this off for a sec. And um, let's quickly go over a few of the other things. Uh, I really like this case. I have liked it for a while, and this is my first time actually building in it. I love the way the panels pop off, like you know, they just they just pop out of there and then they fit back in. Uh, it's got dust filtration for the entire front and the bottom, which is nice. And uh, it's just, it's pretty well built. It doesn't have quite the, uh, like the N3 Pro had a lot of features in my mind, but the build quality wasn't there. This one seems like it's built a bit better. And I like that they've got like some some pads going on here for the sound dim or for the tempered glass side panels and everything. Some things that I'm going to change and update for the second follow-up video, because I do have another video coming on, on this build and, and I will give you guys sexy b-roll then with the RGBs working, I promise. Definitely, definitely need to clean up the cable management down there in the basement. Um, the basement usually you can just shove it in there and it doesn't matter, but here it does because you've got tempered glass on both sides and you can see right through that there because I removed this front piece here because I put the radiator for the uh, NZXT Kraken, Kraken X62 uh, up in front here with the fans pulling in. Um, I mainly did that because I felt like there was uh, there was enough clearance I could have fitted in the top up there but um, I wanted the memory to be able to stand out and it was really bumping up right up against it up here uh, with the fan and the, and the radiator on the top. Uh, so when I do switch out that memory, I want it to not look like it's crowded or anything. Uh, let me know what I, you think I should do about this tubing for the, the, the Kraken, because um, originally it was hanging a little bit looser and dropping down and covering the RGB logo on this graphics card, which is terrible. You can't do that. 
So right now I have it just kind of Velcroed up there with a loop of it to kind of keep it off to the side. But I feel like there, there's a better solution for that possibly. Let me know how uh, badly you think these look, the NZXT fans facing inward with the upside down logos. I think it's okay. I don't, I don't mind the inside of those. Uh, and then of course, gonna be swapping out that G-Skill memory. And I think that's about it. Uh, the only th other thing that I was considering is possibly some extensions or sleeved cables for the EVGA power supply. Oh yeah, the EVGA power supply. So sleeved cables maybe. I might actually, uh, I know EVGA makes them directly for their power supplies, although I don't know, uh, I think they're pretty decent quality. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll see if they wanna uh, uh, send some of those over for the 24 pin as well as the, uh, these are the most visible ones for the, the graphics card there. And then also the EVGA logo on the power supply. I've left it on for now because I don't think it stands out too badly, but let me also know in the comments if you think I should peel that off because, you know, peeling that off is all the rage and that's what we all often recommend in Pit My PC on Awesome Hardware. Anyway though guys, thanks again for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. It's been quite a long build, mainly mainly that thing that happened with the, the cable in the back and the clear CMOS. That, that really threw me for a loop. That was weird and random, but anyway, hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, and I'll be back very soon. Probably give me a week to a week and a half to get the follow-up video on this out because the uh, memory from G-Skill is still on its way and I need to wait for that to arrive before I do everything else. But I do have more videos coming up this week. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Uh, click on links down in the description. I'll put links to all the parts I used and all that good stuff, and we'll see you later. Have a good one.